In today's video, many times people think about being paralyzed affecting your arms or your legs or your hands and things like that. But today we're gonna discuss in a two-part video, first of all, what it means to have your core section paralyzed and what that uh, looks like and uh, how that acts uh, with you in your daily um, skill sets and what you may need to um, be alert to and be careful of. And then we'll also have a part two where we're gonna talk specifically about what's called the quad gut or the parabelly, which goes right with it. But we'll kind of make that a separate video because I got some uh, fellow wheel sisters that are going to, uh, we're willing to show some pictures for themselves also that you can see what we're dealing with affects um, I'm a girl, so I got the girls that are gonna work with me, and I, but it affects guys too. Um, and, and maybe I'll get a couple of them to, to shoot me something if they want to, but or maybe you can share it on, on a link. But we'll talk about that in the second video, which I will link down below in the description. So you wanna make sure and check that too. But for this video, we're gonna talk specifically about what it means for when you're paralyzed and your core muscles are affected. A lot of people don't realize this, that when your back muscles and your stomach muscles and all that are paralyzed, it it makes a major difference and even your seating system for your wheelchair, your transfers, your balance, all of these things are majorly affected. So it first starts with your level of injury and we know there's cervical level of injuries that happen in your neck and if you're paralyzed, you're gonna have some kind of effect and that can be extreme to just little parts that are affected, but there'll be some effect uh, from, from that point of injury uh, paralysis line down and so then you move into the thoracic level of your back which is a lot farther down a, a bigger section of your of your spinal column is your thoracic section and that's really going to affect people are going to be even chest level paralyzed with the thoracic level but their arms and hands won't have any um, won't be affected in any way and then you have your lumbar section which is the lower portion of your spinal cord and that is even lower down and really is not going to affect your core muscles a lot hardly at all it will affect um, you know, your, some of your pelvic muscles and that gives hip stability and stuff like that, and then farther down. So we're gonna break into that and how that affects. So for this, we're really not discussing a lot of the L levels. We're discussing a thoracic level, which would deal, like I say in a separate video, with that parabelly, and then you, uh, then the cervical levels, of course, for quadriplegics. And if you have a cervical injury, you are considered a quadriplegic, even if you have arm function or can move. Technically, I'm a C5, C7 incomplete quadriplegic. I've got pretty good arm strength. I'm funky. I have some good places and some bad places. This hand is much better than this one. It's not great, and it goes up and down. Some days it's better, and some days, like today, it's it's not good at all. It's about as far as I can get uh, these fingers out today. So it just depends for me. I'm a weird duck. Having said that, though, um, my core is very affected. So I have sensation from about here down. It gets start to get spotty. I don't have any sensation from there down. I only have sensation from there up. And I only have decent muscle control and good muscle control through my shoulders. And even this left shoulder sometimes can be, I can move it, but sometimes it's very difficult to get it um, higher. But I can, it, like I said, I'm a weird duck. But when we talk about your core muscles, and you're talking about no, no, I'm gonna back up a little bit, no abdominal muscles. And the way that's affected, whether it, I'm in my power chair or I'm in my manual chair, that starts with my seating system to help keep me stable. Uh, I look very stable sitting in my wheelchair and I am pretty stable in my wheelchair because I have to be because that's how I got to keep my balance all day long. And uh, when uh, for the first few years of my paralysis, I functioned more like a higher T level. So I still had trouble with my balance, but I had some spotty ab muscles that would activate and I had some upper abs that helped me a lot. And then as I've uh, aged with my spinal cord injury, my incomplete status is just a little less incomplete seems like every year for me. Um, and so I have zero, any zero ab control at all now. So that does make me fatigue much quicker. And so they had to change my seating system around a couple years ago to help me with um, some fatigue. And it did help because it gave me more support. So a seating system is vital. And even in this seat, I'm gonna try to get myself leaned up a little bit. And uh, you can't hardly tell the depth of it, but I'm just running my hand across it. I don't know if you can tell that that curves out. This has a curve out, it goes in my back and then it curves out on both sides. And that really helps keep my um, spine stabilized, um, my back stabilized, it gives me some side support. And there's even more supports. And I, and I may, next time I go for a wheelchair evaluation, they may even wanna give me a little more support because I'm still pretty floppy um, at times. It can feel pretty offset. Um, you'll see a chest strap. Some people will wear, have, wear a, a strap around their chest because they just aren't able 
to have any core. I actually like to keep my seat a little bit in a dump so that my butt is sits a little lower than my upper legs and that helps me seat me. And then on my, um, I like to have a little bit of a tilt to my back, even on both my power and my manual chair. I like to tilt my back just a little bit so that I'm always kind of feeling like I'm falling this way. And then uh, even these side side guards for me on my manual chair, I have higher, I had higher ones made so that I had more stability and even laying my arm, it gave me elbow props. I use my elbows and my arms constantly to prop myself. And I'm gonna show you an example of that. So I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna go forward and all I'm gonna do is run my wheelchair at a decent speed and just stop. I'll just take my hand off the joystick and let it stop. And just the momentum of stopping if I don't have my arms bracing myself, I will face plant. Now I'm gonna catch myself, but I'm gonna do it enough to give you an idea. So I'm gonna come back here and I've got my speed on number four, number five is the highest, but I'll just give myself enough room to get it going and then stop. And you can see that I cannot stop myself. Um, and so I'm gonna face plant. Where that comes to roost is if you're going down a hill, I'll normally lock my arm back here um, behind me and just give something I can I can hang on to. Because if not, even just going down an incline, if I uh, turn left or right, um, I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay in this position, not counter correct. That's just from turning around. I'm already falling that way. So that's my point. And then to set up, um, I can't sit myself up. I can go this way and I can keep, run my head. And if I really over extenuate my head, and get my shoulders <laughs> down I'm going this way so I use myself to prop and I and I really can become like the princess and the pea and I hate that but I can I can tell when I'm off balance and I I can't stand it because I feel like I'm constantly falling over and so that's all from a lack of core muscles so that's why um, sitting on a flat surface if I got something to prop against I'm fine if I can hold on with my arms I can keep myself set up if you ask me to lift my arms, I'm gonna fall over <laughs> like a little baby. And that's really gonna be for any higher T level injuries that are gonna lose the higher the level, the less of this muscle that's gone. And so that's gonna move us into um, this quad gut or parabelly, they call it for paraplegics or quadriplegics. And we're gonna discuss what that's all about. Why do you suddenly get this gut that looks like you're pregnant um, after paralysis after a while? What's going on with all that? We're gonna talk about that in the next video, but at least know with the core, there are seating systems. Um, you just have to be careful to know that you don't have balance and other people need to be careful because it doesn't, that's why you don't want people pushing your wheelchair or spinning you around and running. Uh, for me, besides it can activate spasms and it can be dangerous if they don't know how to drive well, but I've never liked it. And, and it's because I'm so off balance that I really um, need to be, we need to be safe in our chairs and make sure um, that you're utilizing everything that you know that you need for you and, and speak up for that um, to keep yourself balanced and stable and safe in your chairs. And so there are um, companies out there with different options. If you jump on the forums, you can ask people what they do. Um, a lot of great ideas out there, but truly a, a great seating system will help you be the most stable in your chair. So I hope that helped. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'll see what I can do to answer them. Thanks for watching.